The coffee chain Luckin goes public today. It's a Chinese company which wants to use American money to compete with Starbucks, an American company, in China. Joining us now is Reinhard Schäkel. He is Luckin Coffee's chief financial officer and chief strategy officer to boot. So welcome to the pro good to, uh, program. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me. Thank you. Uh, am I right in saying that at the moment in China you've got 2,300 stores and you want to double that in the next 12 months? Is that accurate? Yeah, so I think if you look at the numbers as of uh, Q1, close to 2,400 stores, uh, we are uh, growing relatively quickly and I think we've communicated that we want to get to that target by the end of this year. So that's, uh, uh, that's correct. But, so by the end of this year? So uh, literally in eight months you're going to build 2,400 stores, right? Yeah, that, that's right. And I think when you think about sort of our model and how we are different than, for example, your traditional retailers, I think, first of all, the store footprint we have is relatively small. That's what we do to save also uh, rental expenses. And also by using technology, we've got a very good uh, assessment of where we can find demand. So we're more, I guess, of a demand-driven business and supplement sort of our, our network within the, 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 the stores that we require. Um, and I think by the end of this year, based on the demand that we're seeing, we think but we're going to get quite close to that number. Your losses have quadrupled in the first quarter, and your model, according to some, is just about price discounting. Can you keep this up, this kind of cash burn? Yeah, I guess how we look at it is, is, is as follows. I think what we're doing is we're trying to disrupt the industry by using technology, uh, differentiated approach on locations, and, and really sort of try and bring that per cup cost down. Um, I think we've been very successful in bringing that down. And the way we look at it is we, 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 we set our target price at sort of around 16 to 17 RMB over time, which we think is probably the right price for our products. And at these levels, we can actually be very, very profitable. So when you think about subsidies from maybe the listing price, you see, of course, we're giving subsidies because we think the price should be good enough to drive really that mass market demand. Yeah, well, uh, but when you look at our cost base, then yeah. you see that going down very, very quickly. You're underpricing Starbucks by 25% in the market. And some would say that given Given the U.S.-China trade concerns, you know, Luckin might be benefiting from a nationalist fervor in China, yeah. meaning anti-American, so they'll go to Luckin instead of Starbucks. Do you think mm. that's true? Well, we're very focused on, on sort of on our own model. I think the trade war for us is something that we monitor, but that's not something that I think is going to drive the success of our model. But I Chinese, think, again, what so, we're trying so to Chinese do... nationalism would drive your model. In a Look, trade fight with America, and you're going up against an American coffee champion, Starbucks, Mm. I would surely suggest that nationalism could drive your business. Yeah, well, that would be a tailwind that I think we would, would obviously favor. But I think the way we look at our model is really looking at the fundamentals of the model. And I think with the, with the positioning we have, high quality, high affordability and high convenience, that's really what's going to drive our success. But you can't ignore politics here. You can't ignore that you are raising American money, American dollars, to use against an American champion, Starbucks, in China so you can expand and beat them. There's a political angle to this. Well, I think when you look at sort of, obviously we're listed on the U.S. exchange, I think what we've done is also getting a sort of a very global sort of investor base, including several wealth funds and long-only funds that obviously have global pockets. So I think we are trying to get to a place where we're obviously very well capitalized, which I think we've reached today, to really to be able to grow and continue our success that we've seen in the last 18 months and really build on that success. Right, uh, I do have to ask this question. I've heard that you serve coffee with cream cheese in China. Is that accurate? What on earth well, are you up to? Ac actually, it's not coffee. It's actually a tea product. So it's, huh. it's, a, it's a very popular product in China where you have effectively a, a fruit juice with a, a small uh, portion of cream cheese on top of it. And it's probably one of the, uh, the more popular products in China today. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting you to try the grapefruit cheese jasmine tea which yeah. is one of what? their premier drinks. Yeah, grapefruit it's, cheese, it's great. jasmine tea. Uh, Mr. Shekel, perhaps you could arrange for delivery of jasmine <laughs> grapefruit. No problem. I think we can make it happen. Hot. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll tr I'll try it on camera. I really will. I would do that. Ooh. We'll so, make that happen. Uh, the good luck with the IPO today. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.